A so you sneak gotta peek keep at what's searching coming up next. Groups, even groups you never thought might accept you to find acceptance, to find where you fit. If you've never tried theater, try theater. If you've never gone to a gaming store where they play Magic the Gathering, Pokemon, where they play D&D, go. If you've if you've never played on a team sport, go. Go go try to get on a team sport. Some of our own biases might get in the way sometimes because well, but just this, like people have prejudice or bias against us or yes. they may not like us for some reason you might also have some prejudice against some other person because of how they look and you might assume they might not like you you might assume that well that person wouldn't be my friend or that person wouldn't like me or i wouldn't get along with that person but you're just hmm. ju- basing that on superficial things as well or past experience but you've never met this person before test your assumptions All right, so welcome to another episode of On the Spectrum Podcast. I am Nick. And I'm Steve, and I'm... All right, so uh, today... I, I was, I was going to make fun of you, but I decided not to. Oh. Yeah. Aww. I mean, it's been a while. Would you like to do it anyway? No. All okay. right. So welcome to another episode. Uh, as I always do, me and Steve do not presume to be experts of anything whatsoever, but we are two human beings living on the spectrum, and we like to have conversations about things that may and may not affect uh, people on the spectrum. But today's episode, um, which is actually <clears throat> Steve's topic, but today we're going to talk about fitting in and what that may mean and just some of the questions that kind of came up for us when we're uh, discussing that topic but fitting in but it's also your topic steve so i'll let you start dude what does it mean to fit in it means that you can tell your friends about poo poo times and pee pee times oh that's wonderful without being judged for it i've always wanted to be able to tell my friends when i poop yeah yep Uh, that's how comfortable i want my friends to be with me um okay so I think there's there's the fitting in sounds like it's easy to to describe. I mean, I think fitting in to most people just means being able to to blend into the group. But I think that it's maybe a little bit more complicated than that, because I think on one hand, there's surface level fitting in, which is maybe just scraping by or getting along. And then there's maybe a more complicated definition of fitting in is is do you do you are you able to function in the group and thrive are you seen are you heard but uh it might mean something slightly different depending on the person so so let me see if i get your concept of fitting in you're basically saying not just being accepted into the group okay as one of theirs but also like thriving because you said thriving so doing well in that group as well yeah, whatever thriving means to you. Uh, I would say that it means being seen and heard. Mm-hmm. So it's not just about surface level acceptance, but does your voice actually matter? Assuming that you're able to articulate yourself, because you know if you have trouble articulating yourself, if you have trouble sharing your thoughts and feelings, then obviously that might there's not much you can do at that point. I mean, there's some things you can do, but it dep- yeah. depends on the person, but. You know, it's not as easy for some people to express themselves as others. So I I think fitting in, uh, which to me is way too vague and subjective of a, a concept fitting in, because I, th- I think there's way too much criteria between your own expectation, the expectation of the other people as well. But I think to me on like a base level to it, fitting in just means that you're accepted into the group. Not necessarily accepted as a person or or they completely agree with you or love you to, uh, completely, but just they're allowing you in. And maybe that's a really low bar in that way, but I think that's kind of what fitting in is for me. Uh, and because there's a lot of there's a lot of demands on a person to fit in, right? Uh, to have others accept you. And so like there's a lot of pressure for that to fit in. What about, I mean, there's some people who probably who don't really care about fitting in. Yeah. I, I don't know. I've heard people say that many a times, but then I also like those same people are still trying to dress to a certain group or listen to a certain type of music to a certain group or hold ideologies that are relatively similar to a certain group. I think everybody is trying to fit in somewhere. 
somewhere. I'm not necessarily saying in like some large group or anything, but I think everybody's trying to fit in somewhere. Everybody wants to fit in. Everybody wants to belong. Someone like you your daughter. Yeah. I mean, I don't think she really cares much about fitting in. I mean, she wants but people to to love and accept her. I think she wants love and acceptance, but yeah. I don't think she cares about fitting into people's uh whatever, whatever that means. Well, I don't think she cares about <laughs> being seen as one of the group or or blending in with everybody else or any of that type but is, of stuff. But isn't that part of what being loved and accepted is, though? Is is them accepting you completely and wholly for who you are? And so isn't fitting in, isn't part of that wanting and having a desire for acceptance from others? Maybe validation even? Depends on what you mean by that because I, I don't think that um, she might not be she may not fit in when it comes to a lot of different things. She might not fit in with the way she dresses, the way yeah. she talks, the way she acts. Right. And the people who are going to love and accept her are people who are, are going to be her family or friends she has who get her on her level. Right. Well, but, I, and I, and as I'm thinking about it, cause I said a minute ago, I've never met anybody who didn't want to be accepted, but there is, there are people who I've met. And most of them are people who have higher support needs for for whatever type of difference that they have, but generally are people who have higher support needs. Um, like uh, um, because of the line of work I do, uh, I work with folks that have, you know, very heavy support needs that, that have severe disabilities. And some of them care okay um or at least are able to show some level of caring about fitting in but then there's others that I've met in my line of work that nope they do not care like there's nothing that they're communicating in any way shape or form that shows that they have any give a crap about that yeah they want what they want and that's it and i'm not saying that they're cold and callous or or they they don't care about other people i'm just saying that whole social concept of fitting in it they didn't learn it i mean it's a learned thing to want others to accept you i mean think about it if you accepted yourself enough if you had enough you know uh self-worth and self-acceptance do you need others to value validate you then <coughs> Maybe. So that's that's one of the things that I kind of look at with this uh, fitting in kind of thing because it's about meeting a social expectation in a lot of ways. What about you? What? Do I fit in? No. Do you want to fit in? I used to. I used to try really, really hard to fit in. I used to try every single day and I would s try to seek out new groups to try to accept me and try to fill that sense of self-worth and then i started looking inward because i started to get very cynical and bitter about the world and started to say the world ain't gonna accept me so i need to start i need to do work on myself to make sure i can accept me yeah and so i did and it okay maybe that's what contributed to me uh defaulting to being an ass all the time and kind of being that asshole, you know, persona that I put on sometimes, um, that probably contributed to that quite a bit. Do you I, think I, it's because some of your flavor uh -huh. of being you uh, can be seen by other people as somewhat abrasive? Do, do I think whether there's intent there or not? I'm just saying. If you what? Put, I'm saying if you put the any intention aside, uh -huh. that the way that you are as a person uh -huh. can often come across to people as somewhat abrasive. So I'm saying yeah. that, you think that makes it maybe hard for you because on one hand people say, well, you know, we need to love and accept people for who they are. <laughs> yeah. They say that but a lot. <laughs> if the person you're dealing with makes you feel a certain way, then it's yeah. hard to maybe put up with them because, well, they're annoying me or they're stressing me out or they're pissing me off. So yeah, I would love and accept people, but your behavior is irritating me. You, so you you know, I'm going to stray a little bit, not too far, but I'm going to stray a little bit, uh, just kind of hit the fringe of this topic, because you you just said, what if what they do is making me feel a certain way? Where is the level of, of accountability 
on the choices we are making that put us in a situation to cause us to feel a certain way. Well, like if you hang out with somebody that it, that has abrasive qualities, well, no shit, they're going to get on your nerves. But why are you blaming the other person? They're just being who they are. You're the one who chose to hang out with them. I think the problem is when you interact with people in public or at work and in, in places like that, maybe social media, but social media you can still just block or ignore people. Yeah. Um, but and in public, you can walk away from them. But uh, the situation that we talked about on an episode many years ago, I brought up, you know, the many, situation like in a restaurant. Ago? Many years ago? Many, many moons ago. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you know, let's say you're, you're with your daughter in a restaurant yeah. and she's being really loud and I'm yeah. sitting next to her. Let's say I have sensitivity. I have sensory issues with sound. Right. And so her being really loud, it's like, well, I didn't choose to be in a restaurant where somebody's screaming no, next to me. But you did choose to be in public. You were in a common area with others, which means you have to understand that others are not going to behave the way you feel they should in public. Right. Your expectation cannot be or should not be imposed on right. others. But the, I mean, in this situation too, theoretically, yeah. the situation I brought up, which I've never really mentioned this before, but theoretically, yeah. the restaurant could just ask you to leave. If if somebody's being too much of a disturbance to other people, other guests. Right. But it's is a it private, really... it's a private business. They can just say, listen, well, I understand you're absolutely you guys right. are disturbing other guests because yeah. at that point you have one person who's uh -huh. causing an issue for many versus many people dealing uh -huh. with one person who's causing a problem. I understand. So so I'm going to take that to the extremism of that. So we should just lock up all the people that are different than us and hide them away in these buildings no, that we call you, institutions. You can't just go to the extreme with that because it, it's that's not a parallel. Well, the the reason why I'm going to the extreme on that is because because we're not saying it that. starts. That's by the way, right I hand. also don't want to word it in a different way. Yeah. You know that slippery. I don't want to word it that way because I hate it when people say that. Uh, I just heard it way too much. But that's what it ends up being is. I understand that businesses have the right to do so. I also understand that to say that people who have children with disabilities cannot come to my establishment is no. also discrimination. That's not what they're saying. No, no. I'm saying that's the next step, though. No, so because today if your kid is in a wheelchair, uh -huh. they're not necessarily bothering anybody. If your kid is well, there. Well, if your kid is in a wheelchair and has impulsivity if your kid's, issues. If your kid's having a seizure, that might not bother mm -hmm. anybody. Um, it might be well, disturbing to disability. No, but it, you can. There's disabilities where people frequently yeah, have, seizures. have seizures. Yes, yes. Just like being loud isn't an autistic thing, but there's plenty of autistic people who are loud. Is my point? Is what I'm saying. So a person. I don't who, know. Some autistic people are very loud sure. because they, um, well, for because of the they're maybe well, hyposensitive. S some people who are autistic and have higher support needs are uh, can be loud because of impulsivity. Uh, some people who are DD, uh, developmentally delayed. Um, some people who have uh, just impulsivity issues. People who have TBI sometimes have problems controlling their volume uh, or their actions. There's a lot of things, not right. just but, autism but, in that way. But we're saying yeah. that people should have more patience with people if they're being super loud in public, right? Yeah, because it's a common <clears throat> area. I but mean, where, I, do, where, where do you draw the line is my point. So the line that a lot of people draw uh -huh. is somewhere between persons being loud in public uh -huh. who is on the spectrum or, or an autistic kid who's yelling, whatever. Uh -huh. And then somewhere along the line, there's a gray area yeah. where it comes over to Nick's being an asshole. <laughs> That's my point. Yes. yes. There's a gray area there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we're saying most people would say, all right, well, the kid's annoying or irritating me, but like, I'm just going to deal with it because like, I'm trying to be sensitive so, to the so, fact hold that. On. that Here, well, here's the other part of accountability. I just thought of this. That person with sensory issues. Yeah. Okay. The auditory issues that you just mentioned that that's being irritated by. Uh, uh, daughter out in public being loud. Yeah, because sometimes well, people who are but really they know loud that. do bother me. But they know that. You know you have a auditory issue. Yeah, but it's so ninety nine percent of the time it's not a problem because most people don't run around screaming. Okay, well, but you know it might happen. Where's yeah, I might your get hit accountability by a car, but for I still your walk own across issue? The street. Well, you but but before you cross that street, you look both ways. You do something in preparation before you walk across right, that street. Right, and if I walk into a room and it's not super loud, uh huh. but if I get in there and then all of a sudden somebody starts screaming, am uh -huh. I supposed to just be like, all right, well, fuck this, I'm leaving now? No, I think maybe maybe by uh, what I ended up buying, 
those little those little earbud mm-hmm. things that lessen the amount of sound in a room for me. Yeah, that I mean, decrease it by just a lot enough. of times. People who have do that? sensory issues have to either remove themselves or uh-huh. take take methods right to, measures to, they to, have to, to make reduce. accommodations for themselves they have to wear um headphones or earmuffs so whatever yeah. they're doing or maybe they wear gloves yeah. if they have touch issues yeah. whatever they do they take steps to do that right. but um, it's not always that simple there's situations it, sometimes that you're put in that you're not prepared for well, but because that's, that's somebody saying, else's though. behavior might impact you in a way that you're not prepared for because it's not something common like well, for instance people being loud in public is he rather another, common he was another autistic thing right please here's another example yes a lot of autistic people don't like to be touched gee bring up my issue not all but some <laughs> right yeah yeah but there's also a lot of autistic people um i don't say, i say a lot but i don't know what the percentage is but i know that there's some autistic people out there who are handsy yeah, yeah, they, very. They have proximity, proximity issues. They or have they, the opposite of me for proximity issues. Or they, they get really close to people or yeah, they're yeah. very touchy. Right. Okay, right. so there's another situation where mm-hmm. it's it's not so black or white. It's kind of gray. Like, all right, I'm right. in public. I don't like to be touched. Right. But now all of a sudden your kid's coming up and fucking touching me everywhere. So... The, actually, now, there am was, I an asshole if I say, "Hey, can you like get your kid away no, from me?" No, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't think so. Uh, there was actually a, a creator that I just saw yesterday who posted a video all about uh, physical physical violence. Okay, F- being physically harmed by by somebody who's either on the spectrum or has a disability <clears throat> of some type, and they were saying that that person still needs to help, be held accountable. Now, in their description, it did not sound like they were taking into account or talking about people who have, you know, high support needs or, or severe, whatever, uh, whatever wording you want to use on that. But while listening to this person talking, it kind of occurred to me that even people in the autistic community that know that there are other people who behave differently, um, they're, they're still trying to hold people to the same neurotypical social expectation rules to a degree. And no, nobody has the right to put their hands on another human being. I will say that it gets funny when it comes to somebody who has a hell of a lot less control over it. Right, but it's funny to me that you think, see, this is why it's the, the gray area. Yeah, is where yeah. The black and white is not interesting. It's no. the gray area well, that's yeah. interesting. Well, it's the nuanced stuff, what, right? What you're saying to me is interesting because you're saying uh-huh. that if somebody is screaming and yelling in public uh-huh. or whatever, whatever place I'm in, somebody's screaming and yelling yeah, yeah. and it's hurting me because I have sensory issues and it's like causing me pain, uh-huh. that I need to either just deal with it or remove myself from the situation. Mm-hmm. But if... I didn't say remove yourself from the situation. You said remove well, yourself. Well, because that's another way to deal with I'm it. I'm saying... I'm saying, Yeah, it is. But I'm saying... If you know that about yourself, right. can make we, can, accommodation. Can I can I make my point? Yeah, first yeah, 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 yeah. Before you, I just didn't want you to miss okay. color what so, I'm saying. On one hand, uh-huh. you're saying, "All right, well, if somebody's being loud. You know, either deal with it or take measures to mitigate it." But uh-huh. there's a line for you there when it comes to touching. So there is b- a both of those people, th- in theory, mm-hmm. in this hypothetical universe we're talking about, yeah. both of these people can't control their behavior. Right. This person can't control their being loud or yelling, mm-hmm. and this person can't control their touching. Right. But we have a problem with the touching, but the yelling's okay. Right. That's why I'm saying, like, well, why yeah, do you draw and, the line there? Well, because a one is just sound out loud, and the other one's physically touching. But what if they bother being. me the same? Well, so there's there's not actual laws against yelling in a public place. So the law laws, but there are laws against physically touching somebody. So against we should their base will. everything. Base, we should base everything on the legal system. No, no, legal because legal? because so I have a problem with people touching me. I can get very overwhelmed by people touching me. It also doesn't bother me as much when I see somebody with a disability or somebody who has less impulsive control, maybe like a two year old. OK, uh, comes up and, and grabs my leg and hugs me. OK, or or touches me somehow. I have more patience, more understanding. It bothers me less when they do it than when a grown ass adult decides to touch my shoulder because everybody else is OK with it. But isn't that because isn't that just one thing, has then? the ability? Yes. And the auditory thing is just a couple of you. It's not all of us. Right. But you you're saying that you're OK with it. What if somebody else is not OK with it? If well, a two-year-old touches them or gives them a hug. Well, I mean, life. at that point, too, they also need to put it. What I if a two-year-old came and hugged my leg and I fucking I, kicked them away? 
Well, I, would, I mean, I wouldn't do that, but I'm just saying. Yeah, like, I know what you if it bothered it. me so much that I like physically reacted to it, uh-huh. where I just was like, ah, and I just. I'm not uh-huh. saying like I fucking boot him across no, the I mean, room. I'm just I mean, saying. Let's put that in context, though. That two year old who ran up to grab your leg, okay, and hug you has less control over their faculties than you fucking do. Right. Like, so you kicking that child off of you is a is a impulsive reaction, an emotional response. Yes, but you have a greater ability to control yourself. And I know that sounds able. I will say I hear if, it coming if out of my mouth. If something but it's the truth on it. touched me. Yeah. And I didn't know what it was, especially uh-huh. so a two year old grabbed my leg and I didn't initially know what touched me. I might kind of jerk a little bit, but I don't I don't think you would shoo him away with your leg. No, but I'm <laughs> saying what if somebody had less control than we do? Or what right. if it? you said you're able to to make that determination? You're yeah. able to because I can I can hold myself just long enough to be able to make a determination of you're able to say, all right, well, this is a little kid. Form. Yes. And it doesn't bother me as much yes. because I know it's a little kid because I can stay rational enough in those moments. Yes. But, but not everybody. Not can. If, but what if somebody can't? So so let's say I, the I kid touching them experience. bothers well, them just as much. On. I can I can tell you from experience. OK, I have worked in environments where I've had multiple people uh, who had lowered impulse control issues. OK. Um. And in those cases, when one person touched or hit the other person, guess what the response was? Smack. Uh huh. They immediately aggressed back because you got two people who have a lowered ability to control themselves impulsively. Okay, and they have emotional regulation issues that can contribute to that as well. But I also think we need to take that into account. We like if. And I just thought of this because I'm about to take a vacation down to Florida. I just thought about this when it comes to my daughter. Like, we're going to be on an airplane. We're going to be in a closed in metal box, which is going to make me and her very uncomfortable anyway. But people are going to have That's a what problem. Jack Daniels with, is for. I know. Well, I can't do that. I've got to be mindful because I got kids oh. to take care of there. Um, although that'd be fun. I had a, a little nip of whiskey and a yeah. beer on the way to I'd, Florida. I'd love to be tanked up for an airplane flight. Anyway. But I know there's going to be people on the flight who are going to have a problem with her getting loud. Yeah, I mean, it would bother me. What? It would bother me. Yes, it would. Not not just because, like, I'm used to her at your house. Yeah, yeah, But in the context of being in the plane, it's worse because I already don't like being in a closed space. And I'm stuck in there and I can't move. And I hate being stuck in this chair and I can't get up and move from the chair. But what can you do about that? First and foremost, what can you do? There is stuff you can do. the, The only thing I can really do is wear headphones which uh-huh. i'd probably do anyway because i try to like watch something or yeah, watch yeah. tv why don't you get the, the loop my man the ones that go in your ear and decrease it i know that dude, i have i haven't i haven't, them I haven't tried them weeks. i don't know how well they work however i would dude, say fucking banging dude depending on how loud the person is i don't know if it would make that big of a difference because if she's really loud then it, it might it also eliminates extra what what people would call white noise around you like it decreases all that extra around the person's voice as well. Yeah. So it's not, you don't have to concentrate as much on the voice. Now, some people talk too low to the point where like, I'm like, what, what, which I'm already an old man anyway. So whatever. Um, but for the most part, I can hear everybody just fine. And actually I can hear the voices more distinctly when I'm wearing those. All right. Loop aside. I think yeah, okay. the meat and potatoes of this what? They're getting to no, the no, point. The but, point of it is. So part of this is part oh, of the okay, meat and potatoes, dude. No, no, no. Uh, because, you, I know you're talking about a product. I was trying. Well, to no, get no, back no. To I'm the, jumping past that. I'm actually going back to what I was saying about people needing to also take their own personal accountability, knowing their own shit. Like with the touch thing, before people get close enough to me to make that mistake of touching my older, uh, my shoulder, touching my elbow, I tell people uh, I, I don't like being touched. But when somebody makes the mistake of it and doing it anyway, I've got to remember that I'm the one with the issue. So I have <laughs> to take that into account. I can't just immediately flip out and go, how dare you touch me? Because I need to understand that there are fewer people like me in the world than there are like them. Right. But in the case of someone, um, the touching or the being loud yeah, is that. Even people without sensory issues would still be bothered by that stuff. Maybe not to the severity of somebody who has autism. Uh-huh. Somebody with sensory issues, yes, the sound's probably going to bother me more than it would somebody sure. else. And the touching might bother you or me more than it might bother someone else. Yeah. But um, 
yeah, the context does matter for this. Like, I remember we talked a long time ago about those those videos that kept coming up I, I, all the time on YouTube for me. The, the kid who was uh, the videos of the autistic kid at, at Disney, and oh, all the, yeah, yeah. he was very touchy with the princes and the princesses, yeah. and they were kind of like they understood the context. They were like, okay, it's fine. Right, you're just being huggy and like friendly. That's it. But even still, other people might not be okay with that. Yeah. But uh, I think if you were a performer and you're used to kids, you kind of mm -hmm. maybe get desensitized to it, or you're just expecting that some kids are going to be a little touchy. Right. Uh, but if I'm not a performer, I'm just a random person, and some kid starts, like, getting all handsy with me, I'm like, oh, what the hell? You know? Well, I mean, there's also there's also a level of responsibility on the parent or the caregiver or the, the employee of whatever group on the person works at. There's also a level of responsibility of them. But the, Nick, the meat and potatoes, what I was trying to get yeah. to... The meat and potatoes. What you of think this, is the simplest version of this? Okay, it's not the simplest. I'm saying what the heart of the matter is. The heart of the matter is to where you. do you draw the line? What do you mean to me? To, what I'm saying to you? Yeah, will you is shut the fuck up and let me talk? The way you're wording it, it's like well, this is this is the main crux of it. I I don't think there is a. Um, do you like hearing yourself speak? <laughs> all right, go ahead, go ahead, dude. I'm all done. Go ahead. The at some point. People are okay with certain things and people are not okay with other things. And we draw a line somewhere. Right? Everybody draws a line somewhere. So for you, the line is if it's a little kid touching your leg, you're going to, you're, 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 that's not crossing a line for you. If it's a kid who's screaming, that's not crossing a line for you, even if it bothers you. Okay. Was there more to that? Uh, I don't remember what I was going to say. Oh, it sounded like there was more. No, I did. I did have more, but I don't remember what I was going to say now. Oh, because I couldn't say it when I was trying to say it because you interrupted me. Okay. Okay. So back and forth conversation. Got it. I mean, it's going well. Yeah. Well, you know, try to take turns in talking. But uh, I found that I have to try to speak over you sometimes. Otherwise, I okay. can't actually get my thoughts out. Yeah, but, you know getting irritated and uh you know trying to diminish somebody in the process doesn't make sense to me because uh, i don't i don't sling that stuff at you i i don't do that and i don't were, do it because you i can talk over people and um if i want to interject something on in the <clears> moment <throat> i do so because you want to talk about meat and potatoes of a situation or you want to talk about this in particular I don't think it's as easy to say as, you know, if if, you know, the one person in the room is the problem, then eliminate them from the equation, because I don't think that eliminating them from the equation is actually a solution because you're taking away a human being's right to exist where everybody else exists. I, I never said remove the person from the equation. I well, mean, you're saying the meat and potatoes of it. I'm saying I was talking about the the, the, the issue is where we draw lines with things. Um, well, I, and why why is some behavior we've decided is not acceptable and other behaviors we've decided is acceptable regardless of um, the person's uh, faculties or, or what their intentions are? Because we, we, we think that intent matters, but at some point it doesn't to us because it's, well, there's certain lines that people cross and it doesn't matter what their intent is and we, we're not willing to put up with certain behaviors. Because some behaviors are more destructive than others. Somebody being loud in a public space, and I'm talking all public spaces, okay? Whether it's being at fireworks, being at a carnival, uh, movie theater, restaurant, uh, airport, uh, airplane, these are public places. And as a general statement, I'm going to make, if you're in a common area with other human beings and you have an issue, you need to be the one first and foremost responsible 
to help yourself, you can't get pissy at the rest of the fucking world because you're a little agitated with something in a public fucking place. I I honestly believe the amount of people who want to bitch and moan because somebody gets a little loud in public. Well, you're the one with the issue with the being loud. You're the one who can't put into context that not everybody's going to behave the way you want them to. Right. And I think, think the problem is with those situations is um, you have. I think this is what what people get irritated with is if you have one person. Who's impacting everybody else. So you have like 30 people who are being impacted by one person. Uh huh. So okay. it's, it's not I think people feel like it's not fair. Uh huh. Like, well, here, here's what I can say to them. And it's also not fair that this person was born with a disability. It ain't fair that they were all born with the ability to control themselves. It's not fair that they're going to hold somebody else who's different to a standard of them. It's not fair that they get to go home. They get to sit in their car. They get to hold hands with the person they love. It's not fair that this person doesn't get to do it. It's not fair that this person has to have an assistant 24 hours a day, seven days a week, just to do simple tasks like take a shit. So if you want to talk about what's fair and what's <laughs> not, you're talking about the difference between what uh, what bothers your comfort level. Um, that's that's kind of where I draw the line is at what point are we treating somebody who's different as less than human? That's that's where I sit on that. Well, you don't have to be you don't have to like d d uh, demean them or say something mean to them, but you might not. It doesn't mean that you, you still don't want to be in that situation, that the situation mm -hmm. is frustrating irritating to you then walk away and there's some people who you have the ability to do that i've heard people um propose that like certain um airlines should offer flights that are child free so that people who don't want to deal with like you know crying babies or yelling or screaming kids because not it's not just autistic kids there's no no, no there's other situations there's regular yeah, yeah, yeah. not regular you know what I mean. yeah I do. there's non-autistic kids who regular sounds like fucking unleaded or yeah yeah yeah, uh, <laughs> is it decaf or caffeinated? I'm a little. My kid's yeah. a little caffeinated. Yeah, exactly. Um, there's kids who are uh, allistic who uh -huh. are loud as fuck too. Yeah, some kids are just loud. Yeah. Um, and there's babies who scream and cry on planes, right. and some people just don't want to deal with that, whether they have sensory issues or whether they just are. Maybe they they have other situations. Either they just don't like it, or maybe they get like really bad migraines. Whatever it is. I mean, that might not be a bad option. I don't know if if I, it would ca cause any legal issues. I don't I, see why it would if a plane wanted to offer, hey, for these f specific flights are... Kid-friendly? No, I was going to say certain flights are like you can book and you can choose to either go on one that's adults only or like... So you have to be 18 plus on certain flights or something like that. So so they would have to have far more planes running all the time? Or just divvy up the flights they do have. So you provide like certain options. So not all of them. But let's say you have three flights going to uh, Orlando, uh -huh. right? And like one of them is adults only or something. Uh -huh. So the adult, maybe the adult flight is later in the, at night or something like that. And then the kid flights are, I, I'm just saying. I don't, I don't know. Somebody's going to find that unfair in one way or the other. Some, somebody's going to throw that indignant fucking uh, um, over entitled bullshit kind of feeling out. They're well, going to throw it out there. Oh, that's not fair. I have to wait until 8 p.m. just because they have a child. What yeah, a, no shit. What about the people who, well, okay, well, how do you feel about when um, airlines wanted to charge bigger people for more, more than one seat if they take up more than one seat? Oh, we're going to go there? Well, it, it's kind of similar. You think, it's, you think that's similar? Because they thought it was unfair. W what? Fat people? <laughs> Yes. Yeah. And I do actually think that that's unfair. <clears throat> okay. I, I, so one of the reasons why I think that's unfair is yes, the airline is losing out on, on that other seat, right? What's well, yes, but that's not, it's not that Stanley problem. As far as I understand it, the, the bigger problem wasn't that they're losing that ticket for that seat. Okay. It's that the people would book buy one ticket. Yeah. But then if you book, if you filled up a flight, uh -huh. now that person doesn't fit in the one chair. Oh, right. So now the what do you do with the person who's losing their seat? So, so they oh, wanted. Oh, oh, what you're saying is if the flight is booked and the person couldn't have both the, the seats. The person who's larger. Yeah, yeah, bought, yeah. The fat person. A ticket. I have no problem calling some like we're this is a hypothetical person. Why are we worried about their feelings? OK, so you have this large rotund individual. Yes. Rotund. 
who theoretically would take up two seats. Yeah. Yeah. But they bought one ticket. Right. And now you have a fully booked flight. Right, right. And now potentially yeah. somebody can't get on their flight because there's no room for them now because this person can't fit in one chair. Well, I think that so this is where this is where things going to get real less than sensitive. I think the person who is larger that would end up having two spots uh, because it's a full flight, they should get their ticket refunded or switch to another flight. I think, well, the solution was for the airline was that if you're a larger person, they wanted you to buy You have to buy two tickets, yeah, Um, which I don't necessarily agree with either. I mean, both are insensitive. Both are, both are, I guess, fat shaming, I guess, but I, but the practicality of that, right? Like one of the, so if it's a full flight, one of the two of those people doesn't have a seat. Yeah. Right. And one person bought a ticket and is not inconveniencing somebody else in the process. Somebody else, on the other hand, only bought one ticket, but needs two spots. I mean, obviously an airline has to make that decision for themselves, but I think that, I think that's like the outskirts of what we're talking about. Uh, And the reason why is because there is, you know, if we really want to talk about this in an insensitive way, I mean, some of the folks who are heavier set could have and maybe should have done something about it. Um, But when it comes to people who don't have a choice in the matter, um, when people, the people who cannot do something about it. And and I will say can't do something about it because I know everybody loves to think, well, if they just work on it, they can. Yeah. Well, some of the people we're talking about don't, don't have the ability to per se. Um, and actually, um, I, I watched a different, uh, TikTok, and the person said, uh, we should just give them more meds then. Give who meds? Anybody who's got impulsivity issues. I mean, I kind of do that, but it's called alcohol. <laughs> I self-medicate when I get on the plane, but that's well, more for is, me than it is, is for you. Yeah, but that's also not good for you. I'm I not mean, wearing not headphones because, would probably be easier. I'm not going to start screaming and yelling, but I uh, I do get a little bit uh, anxious being stuck in a chair. Yeah, but you like when you get anxious though. At times, I'm not saying you do on an air flight, but I know at times when you get a little anxious or or a little something or other, you get rather irritable. Like, and I'm saying nicely, you get irritable. Um, although when somebody says that you're irritable in that moment, mm, that just becomes a thing. But what I'm saying with that is like, and I'm not trying to say you're doing anything wrong with that. Cause you know, you're, you have a heightened sense of emotionality in that given moment. Cause you've got a bunch of things that are kind of weighing on you or pressing on you. Um, but there are things you, not just you, but anybody in that situation can do. Like if you're somebody who doesn't like hearing a crying baby on a flight, Buy some earbuds and play some damn music. Yeah. Like if you if you're a person who uh um who doesn't like uh being in a restaurant where the kids are rowdy and are not behaving the way you think they should behave, then don't go to that restaurant. And and but I mean there is a line to be drawn at some point, but also take into consideration that one kid's rowdy, one person's rowdy ass kid is not necessarily doing it because there is a disability or a difference to them, but then somebody else's kid may have that. And I don't think we should treat both those situations in the same way, but when you're in a public place, there's no way to to determine the difference between the two, but I think we need to have a level of understanding that that could be the reason why. I I do want to make a point that uh, I was playing earlier in my line of questioning, I was playing Alex Jones, I was playing Tucker Carlson for a minute there, I was just asking questions. Um, I, know. I don't. It was weird because I wouldn't necessarily treat a kid a certain way because they were being loud or being annoying, or at least what I perceived to be annoying. If I thought a kid was doing behavior that I found irritating, like they were being super loud, which can be irritating to me, especially because I have uh, issues with sound, especially in closed spaces, like small yeah, spaces. It does. Um, but my line of questioning was to probe Nick not to not to suggest because I didn't never said what my opinions were, but this my true. line of questioning made it seem as though I have such a huge problem yeah. 
with people who have these uh, issues controlling their controlling themselves when it comes to touching or sound. Right. But I just wanted to, to make sure that anybody listening, um, I'm sure anybody who listens regularly knows me by now. But yeah, if you yeah. don't, uh, I was asking questions to try to get somewhere. Elicit responses and move the conversation forward? Yeah, but I was trying to ask you tough questions on purpose because those are because people have strong feelings about these things, especially when it comes to being on an airplane with a crying mm. baby. That yeah. stuff annoys the shit out of people. Right. Um, well, I, I think you said it absolutely correctly in there at some point, which was um, the gray. Right. Like that needs to be talked about way more. And, and when it comes to everything neurodivergent, people need to start talking about the gray far more. The middle right. ground. Well, if you have a kid who's handsy. Yeah. Like there may only be a limited number of things you can do to try to stop that kid from doing it. Right. At some point, the person who's being touched may need to just remove themselves from the situation, Uh which is kind of what you were saying, or at least step away from the situation. Right. Depends. Like if you're in public and some kid's touching you, all right, well, I'm just going to go over here now because they keep touching me. Um, But I think, I think what I was trying to get at in the heart of of all the questioning that I was doing Uh was that even though we know that kids or even adults who are doing some of these behaviors uh-huh. don't necessarily intend to bother or irritate or harm the person that they're doing, it doesn't mean that it's going to be easy for the person being affected to deal with it or right. that it doesn't affect them. It's not to say like, well, oh, you should just fucking get over it and ignore it. No, because like, what if it really does fucking bother? What if I have a problem? Just like they have a problem not controlling their voice, right. they have a problem not touching somebody. I have a fucking just as much of a problem as them, mm-hmm. but the opposite. Like it bothers me that much. Right. It doesn't like it doesn't lessen the impact so, of their behavior. No. And, and here's here's where I'll say in that. So when we're faced between the two, your auditory stuff gets to the point of pain, right? It gets to a point of physical, you know, discomfort. I I don't know the level to describe that as, but I'm going to say physical discomfort. That kid or so causes extreme anxiety. If I'm in a closed space Um, in a plane, if a kid was screaming the whole time, um, if I'm I'm able to drown, if I'm able to drown them out, then it might not bother me. But if I can't, it would raise my anxiety level to the point where, um, I would have trouble dealing with it or I might have a panic attack or break or something like that. I'm going to say an, on an airplane, it's much harder to get away from that situation. You have to wait until the flight ends. But again, there is far more you can do than that kid can do or that adult with an issue can do. Well, you heard about ball gag. (laughs) Um, There's far more you can do now. In an airplane is a very specific situation. In most other situations, you or I, being the one who has more control over our faculties, can walk the fuck away. I've done that. I have. I have. I have been at a mall. Uh, there was somebody. There was somebody's kid who was just coming up to me. I walked out of the store. I walked into another store to get away from the situation. And then after about 10, 15 minutes of being in the other store, I went back to the store I actually wanted to be in. Now, was it inconvenient to me? Yes. But I'm also not going to get super pissy and say it's unfair that I had to walk away for 10, 15 minutes because part of part of having an issue is you have to own it. You have to you have to take a responsibility and accountability for yourself. It is your issue. And also on the flip side of that, maybe that that kid's parent should have been right there and tried to stop him from touching. But what if they have an impulsive uh, impulsivity issue that that makes it really hard to do so? Are we going to say that kid can never leave their house because it might make some, you know, entitled folks a little uncomfortable? Some people would say yes, by the way. Well, well, if I'm entitled, if I don't want a kid touching me? No, not necessarily. I'm just saying, like, I'm thinking more of when I say the entitled part, I'm thinking more about the people who get pissy in a restaurant and they're like oh, i decided to come out and have a nice meal well then you should have a nice meal Karen. and i don't know how yes i don't know how the kid on the other side of the room is ruining your day Did you ever see the video of that um karen who there was this, these this, these guys they cook food in the back of a truck mm-hmm. like they'll catch stuff like they'll catch fish or they'll hunt oh that's cool and then they cook up food in the back of a truck uh-huh. 
They were making a meal in the back of their truck in a parking lot. Yeah. And this lady called the cops on them because she said that they it was inappropriate for them to be cooking in their truck. Really? Yeah, like she made a, a huge stink about it. I just thought it was funny. Well, like, yeah, I really, mean, why the, do you care so much? Right. There are people who who don't like the way somebody else dresses and and tries to say they shouldn't be out in public looking like that. Right. And and to so to me, that's a very similar kind of idea of somebody trying to dictate how somebody else is going to behave. You know, that kid's that kid in a park who's screaming at the top of their lungs or scripting or or just being them it's not hurting anybody in a park it's not hurting anybody at a carnival you know because you're not inside. excuse me you're not inside <clears throat> the, are there certain situations where the parent needs to remove that person yes but if the parent or guardian or caregiver removed the people from those situations every single time it bothered anybody they'd never go anywhere they wouldn't be allowed out in public and so that's a problem I have with it, too, because these people have a right to be where wherever you are in a thousand and one ways. I think the people who typically make a big stink about all this stuff, mm -hmm. in my opinion, because I, I don't know all these people individually, obviously, yeah, but yeah. I, I think that most of these people are just fucking bored. They have no life or they have no personality. Mm. So they get way too interested in what other people are doing. Yeah. Like because you have nothing else to do or think about. Right. Um, there was there's a there's a group group page for New Bedford, the city of New Bedford yeah. on Facebook. And I was in the Fall River when I left. New Bedford one is pretty much just as bad. And it's all, not all, but majority of the people on there are like these weird, barely literate conservatives <laughs> who complain about immigrants constantly. Oh, yeah. And there was people talking about housing. There's a bunch of landlords in these groups. And yeah. this lady was complaining about the city wanting her to list her income versus expenses for her properties. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, it's to make sure you're not a slumlord. Right. Because like how much money are you making on these properties? How much, what's your expenses? Are you actually maintaining the buildings? Yeah. And this guy in the comments was talking about how the state votes for too many Democrats and that you should need to pass an IQ test to vote. And I responded and I said, uh, why would you want to lose your right to vote? <laughs> <laughs> and then he called me uh um, a cuck or something. Yeah, he responded right. and said that I was a cuck and asked what yeah, my pronouns were. And I'm like, I think you're barking up the wrong tree, buddy. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. I was like, you know that nobody who actually has an I, a high IQ would say that? Yeah. Like, yeah. nobody who actually has an <laughs> IQ would say, you should need to pass an IQ test to vote. I'm like, that just... Right. Like, right. first of all, you can barely write a sentence. <laughs> um. Yeah, it's just funny to me that the people who run around and like mm. say that type of stuff usually are dumb as like fucking well, their heads full of rocks. Well, yeah, yeah. Like, I, mean, that's, I said the problem isn't low IQ voters, right? The problem is uninformed voters. Yeah, that's what's really a problem, right? Because there's plenty of people who have a high IQ who are fucking dumb. Like uh, you can true. have a high IQ but not know anything. That is a true statement. And a lot of autistic people are have high IQs. But there's a lot of shit they don't know, especially yeah. when it comes to social things. Yeah. Just By the socially... way, he did not say all autistic. He said most. No, I said a lot. A lot. Yeah. Same thing. There's a lot. A there's, lot. there's a lot of autistic people who don't have high IQs, but yeah, there's yeah. a lot of us who do. But we still have a lot of social issues. We have so social deficits, whatever right. you want to call it. Some people don't like that term, but yeah. we have things that we're not very very bright with. Things right. we're not very smart at. Right. So I wouldn't say that that's necessarily a, an advantage when it comes to voting. No. Just because you're book no. smart or you're able, you have high intelligence, doesn't mean that you're going to vote better or That's vote right. than someone else. The problem is, regardless of someone's intelligence level, is do you actually know about anything that you're voting about? Do you actually know any of the issues? Do you know any of the policy positions? That's what's more important because yeah, you can be dumb but have a good grasp. Like you can yeah. be not very intelligent, but if you know the issues. And you and you know who the the politicians are. If you know right. what you're voting for, I'd rather that dumb person vote. What's the politi politically politically correct term for someone who's not very smart? I don't know. Is because um, I, I thought dumb was no. offensive. Now it is. It is to somebody because um, dumb dumb is a uh, means something else. Whatever, unintelligent person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So an unintelligent person. I'd rather have the, the unintelligent person vote who actually knows the issues versus right. a really smart person who doesn't right. know what the fuck they're voting for. I, I agree. I agree. Well, um, 
I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to round this back real quick, but this kind of goes to what you're talking about with that. I'm just going to tie it back into our community a little bit because there's there's a lot of folks in our community, uh, in our community who want to ostracize, insulate, and control who's in our group and who's not. And what I mean by that is there, there are folks that are constantly saying what's misinformation, what's not. And there's some things that are truly like just not true shit. Um, although I'm, I'm starting to get irritated by the word misinformation. I really am. I don't know why. But there's there's a lot of information out there that that is not the most thought out, let's say. Well, a lot of buzzwords lose their meaning on, yeah. the, on the Internet. Yeah, like yeah. people use certain words so often, right. like fascist. Fascist yeah. doesn't mean yeah. anything anymore because people use it all the time. Well, and people used it so far left or right of center of what it actually means that it starts to get all vague. Or if you subjective. say, oh, that person's a fascist. Yeah. I'd rather you just tell me what it is that they believe in that <laughs> yeah. you don't agree yeah. with. Because yeah. when you say they're a fascist, I don't know what you mean. Because right. Not anymore. there's 50 million definitions of right. it. Same thing with socialism, yep. communism. Yep. Uh, uh, certain isms like yeah. racist, sexist, all these terms that people miss, like they misuse it and they use them so often yeah. that when you say these things, I don't know what the fuck you mean. Yeah, yeah. Like, is this person actually sexist or did right. they just say something you don't like? Yeah. Well, so, so what I was trying to get at for a minute there, and I, I agree with you completely. What I was trying to get at was when somebody first starts looking into the autism community online, when they first start trying to get in, you know, look up autistic creators and stuff, when the person first does those things, they don't know the language to use. They don't know what is considered acceptable by some in our community. And I think it's interesting that there's a lot of creators who say that this is what the autistic community has agreed on what we're going to call ourselves and how we're going to talk about it. Yeah, but not everybody in the community did. I don't remember getting that ballot vote. Did you? No. I did. I voted yes on TISM. Oh, you did. Okay. Okay. Well, you know, I wouldn't have voted for the TISM. No, I would have. Um, but my point is just like new people coming into the community and then artistic creators, when they see somebody who posts a video and they're not even necessarily calling themselves an advocate or an educator or any of that, they're just saying they're autistic and they, they use a phrase or a word that this person and their close group of people don't like, they immediately shit on them and say, Oh, you're spreading misinformation, blah, 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 blah. You to tell your own experience and to tell your own story and to say you're a part of a group, you shouldn't have to call up somebody, some arbitrator, and say, hey, what's the appropriate wording here? Well, see, so here's the problem like, I run into. But that's part of the fitting in. I try, like, I've been I've been doing a lot of these uh, videos for the month of April. Yeah. And I try to be sensitive to everybody, uh -huh. but it's impossible to make everybody yeah. happy. You can't. But, like, I did a video about Hans Asperger. Yep. And I know people don't like to use his name. They don't like to use the term anymore yep, because... Great. Uh, he was a Nazi and because of uh, it's not in the DSM anymore. And for a bunch of different reasons, he also yeah. was uh, complicit in helping the Nazis um, kill uh, disabled kids. Yeah. And he also saved some disabled kids, you know, the ones he deemed worthwhile, um, which ain't right. But yeah. right. And I, I, there was I don't remember the guy's name. The guy on TikTok who was interacting with me was it Aspie Bear or something is his name. Yeah. Yeah. Or asking Redneck yeah, Bear. Uh, yeah, Redneck Bear, I think it is. He was saying, oh, well, you know, he had to... I, I, I don't remember... I don't... Because the argument he was making, I actually don't know enough about it. Okay. I don't know enough about Hans Asperger to yeah, know yeah. if what he was saying was true or not. He was saying something along the lines that basically he had to... He had to work with the Nazis. He didn't right. have a choice in it. Right. And that he helped save some kids uh -huh. and stuff like that. And he was trying to say that, like... I think he was trying to say that the guy did more good than bad and that like if he was complicit in helping to get rid of kids with disabilities mm -hmm. that he didn't have much of a choice in it or something. Okay. I mean, I, I would say that I think you always have a choice, but the, there is to some choices in some situations might lead to your death, but yeah, yeah. like, and I, and I think, or what well, imprisonment. Yeah. I mean, I've brought up the book many a times, actually, I think both of us have, but uh main search for meeting Victor Frankel, he talks about in the book, how how there were guards who he had empathy for and he even felt bad for, he had pity for because they were forced into that position. 
They didn't have a choice in the matter. They had to tr- they had to look at somebody as being a piece of shit and, and and less than human to be able to do their job. And and people were like, well, they didn't have to do that job. Well, the choice was do the job or die. Like they also had a family that they were trying to protect in all of that. <clears throat> Yeah. Um, and I'm not trying to say we should give any sympathy to a fucking Nazi. I don't agree with that either. It's just a matter of like there were people who were in the Nazi army who had to serve under Hitler because they were fearing for their family's life. And their remember, own life. he only had like a third of the vote. He only did. Yeah. Yeah. Like he didn't actually have a full amount of the <coughs> vote. Um yeah. I, mean, I mean, we're sounding like Nazi sympathizers. But my, my point not, was I did the but, video about Hans Asperger. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, I know I wanted to cover stuff that people aren't going to like. I did the yeah. Elon. I knew the Elon Musk video people weren't going to like because he's a controversial figure. People don't okay. like him. And people don't like bringing <laughs> up Hans Asperger. Mm-hmm. So in the video, yeah. I poked fun at Asperger and I made right. some jokes. And in the comments, I even apologized. Hey, I apologize if anyone gets offended by this video because I used his name and I right. brought him up, blah, 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 blah. And that's why that guy responded was because he's he was he felt like I was apologizing too much for using it or yeah. whatever. And I'm like, no, it's fine if you identify. Like I, I had to point out to him. Right. I don't care if you identify the way. It doesn't bother right. me. But I'm trying to be sensitive because I know that people are offended yes. by a lot of these terms of the word. So like, well, you know, but the at the same time. The videos that I'm doing, mm-hmm. I'm talking about history. I'm talking about yeah. figures. Like, am I supposed to pretend these people didn't exist? Right. Like, I'm still talking about them in a factual way. Yeah. I didn't mention any opinion. Mm-hmm. And pretty much, I, I do a few times. But for, for most of the videos that I've done so far for April, I don't mention my opinion at all. No. no, it, no. There's a couple times, like, during the representation one for film and TV where I do mention, like, I think we should have more representation of other types of people. Right. But for the most part, like I'm just mentioning facts. Yeah. And most of them, I'm not fucking sharing opinion, but people treat me as though I'm mentioning opinions and I'm not at all. So I, so that's part of this too, is like, and I know this is going to sound really weird because I think it's a weird fucking concept, but like people are starting to confuse the difference between, not starting. I mean, it's actually been happening for a while, confusing the difference between fact and opinion. And here's one of the things that, that I'll say is if you're if you're wording something in a positive way, you're probably giving an opinion. If you're wording it in a negative way, you're probably giving an opinion. But if you're wording it in a neutral way, it ain't a, an opinion. Well, like, so some of the things I said on the Elon Musk video might have been too nice. Yeah. Um, because some of the adjectives I used to describe him yeah, were okay. favorable, but I also pointed out that he says a bunch of dumb shit. And well, he does. He's... He said a bunch of controversial things on Twitter. I, and I was going to point this out. People don't like to acknowledge that he's on the spectrum. Okay. And people like to shit on him and just be like, I don't know if he is. But then they accept people like Tesla, even though he was never diagnosed. He never said he thought he was autistic. Nobody ever thought he was autistic till nowadays. I don't know where some people get some of this crap from. Um, but like they're willing to accept a guy who tried to marry a pigeon. Maybe, but, I mean, maybe he, it's because Tesla's they don't want crazy. to be associated with certain people. So, but that's my problem. Is, is it, is is it accept like accept all of them or none of them? Like, well, you can accept Elon Musk as being autistic, but you don't have to like him. You're right. And, but that's, you can still think he's an asshole. Well, that, that's part of my problem, though, is people are picking and choosing you who still they think want he's a to rich accept. Douchebag. And that's okay. You can. People want to pick and choose who celebrity wise, top name they want to associate themselves with that has aut- autism, but. We don't even know if half these people have autism. What if he found out that uh, we were just talking about Nazis? What if he found out that Hitler was autistic? Would all of a sudden right. be like, he's not? Why? Right. Well, people would actually say, no, he's not. And they would try to rationalize because autistic people are nice or honest or whatever the hell. Wait, somebody you don't like. What if it's Trump? Right. Yeah. Okay. What if you found out Trump was autistic? Right. Would you be like, no, he's not. Why not? Because I don't like him. Yeah, exactly. Like. We, we've got to accept all of the community or none of the community. I mean, I guess. I mean, I there's some middle ground there, but. It, well, but accepting them as being in. autistic doesn't mean you have to like accept them. their behavior yeah, yeah, yeah. or like them because yeah. they, they can do things like uh, like the Elon Musk example. There's a lot of it's things he says that people have a hard time looking past. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean you have to um, you have to like him or accept him as a right. person, but you can accept him as being an autistic person. Right. It doesn't mean that you have to like everything he does. So, I mean, he, 
he says a lot of controversial, polarizing shit. Right. Yeah, well, he does. He does. Um, but I still think if if he is on the spectrum, we need to accept him into our community as such. Um, and we don't have to like him as a human being. We can think he's an asshole just because he's a billionaire. That doesn't inherently make him an asshole. Um, but we we also need to not pick and choose. Like, but the same thing goes with some of the language people say and some of the like shitting on other people that people want to do right now. Like if somebody's new in their journey for autism, they might not say things that you agree with, you know, verbiage wise, but also who are you to judge somebody else's verbiage about how they identify themselves? Um, who are you to try to tell somebody that neuro spicy can no longer be used? None of us voted for this shit, so you can't say the vast majority of the community because there's actually millions and millions of people that are on Facebook groups that still want to call themselves Aspie. I I and thought Latin. Nero Spicy was weird at first, but then I kind of yeah. I kind of grew to like it just because it sounds a little rebellious. <laughs> I think that's why a lot of people it sounds want, like, like liked using it. It sounds like, you know, I'm I'm owning my difference. Yeah. And I'm is. having fun with it. That's what it is. It's, it's owning your difference. What's wrong with self validation? But if people find it offensive, way. whatever. It's fine. Yeah. I th I thought the reason why I decided to use that as a tag for the April yeah. videos is because I'm trying to own it. Yeah. Um, you know how a lot of a lot of these social media folks like to say what's harming our community. This is harming our community. That's harming our community. This is harming our community. About a fuck ton of shit, right? Here's my opinion on what's harming our community. People who just want to talk about what's harming our community all the time and, and want to control who says what and how. Now, if somebody is just a complete whack job of what they're saying that's completely, absolutely false, great. But if it's a different verbiage to describe themselves, don't invalidate the human being in the process. Like, you're harming the community because you're trying to exclude people who are just trying to fit in who are just trying to belong it's called gatekeeping yeah yeah it's another one of those buzzwords that i want to avoid um so i i do want to move on to that part because I, I do you know because there are probably and i know there are uh there are some folks uh, uh in our community who struggle fitting in how can we do it better how can how can we help ourselves to fit in better? I don't think you can. You don't. You can. You can try to nothing. You can try to mask. What about you what about learning? You can wait for society to catch up to the rest of us. Well, I think both of those are pretty bleak, though. Well, there's not much in between. I mean, you just progress is generally slow. So well, if you want people to just is. accept us for how we are, yeah. without masking, it's going to take time for people to. <laughs> Because unfortunately, we like to talk about autism acceptance, sure. and we don't like the term awareness anymore, but there's still a lot of people who are not aware, who don't fucking know anything about autism, right? which there is are, the majority of people. Yeah, that's the majority of people, which is why when I first saw some videos that said, this is autism acceptance month, not awareness, I'm like, well, maybe we should work on the first part first. Um, I think a lot of people are aware that autism exists, but they don't actually know anything about it. No, and and that's part of awareness is people coming to an understanding. Acceptance would be a very different step. And I'm gonna I'm gonna go out and and maybe tiptoe into the ableist direction a little bit. Um, I do think there is something you can do other than wait for society to catch up or mask. I think there is something we can do because we're still humans and we still have the capacity to learn and grow. I'm not saying people need to mask who they are, but I do think we need to be aware of and educate ourselves when it comes to social expectations. But but learning some of those things and altering our behavior isn't that kind of masking? To a degree, but what what would be growth and progress for a human being at some point like like are we gonna sorry if you alter your behavior enough at some point you just that becomes your new default anyway but that's but that's what growth as a human being is is our behaviors alter we also time. draw lines there because what's the difference between me what's the difference between something that's ableist or unrealistic expectations and a reasonable expectation right that defend, depends on the individual. Like for me, I used to get really close to people when I talked to them. I had yeah. proximity problems. Yeah. I don't do that much anymore. No. But I've altered my behavior. Does that mean that I 
internalize some form of ableism? Did I, right. was I masking? Was I changing myself to try to meet other people's expectations in a way? But for me, I was able to do it. And like now I don't even think about it. Well, you, you're actually bringing up a good example. And I think this might add a little bit of nuance to some of what people are talking about. You said you saw something that was affecting somebody negatively and you altered that behavior. Yeah, but you didn't change anything about who you are in the process. You just altered a thing you did, so you didn't stop yourself or change. A no, part but I of had to be aware of are. it. Yes, and I had to remind myself when I started doing it. Right. Hey, don't do that. But right. that at some point you don't think about it anymore. It just becomes your new default. Right, because it becomes your habit. Right. That's growth. Like there are people who think everything about themselves, every little thing they do is who they are, and nobody can ask me to stop. But why does your want and desire trump somebody else's want and desire? Why why is what you want and how you want to behave, why is that more important than what somebody else wants? But on that, before, you know, away from the diversiveness of what I just said or the divisiveness of the way I worded that, where is their personal growth in it? And I know somebody's going to say, well, I have all these issues and it stops me. I can't X, Y, Z. But there are things you can do. Well, we mentioned earlier, right? The examples I brought up yep. are two that, like, what are you going to do? Uh, in, if in you're what? if you're someone like your daughter and she's being loud all the time, yeah, what do you expect her to do? Well, I mean, a lot of people expect us as parents to just shut her up. And I'm not asking about you, but what not, can she do? Is that's what I'm saying? What can she do? Well, what's within her power to do? I mean, a. When it comes to somebody who has deficits in a certain in certain areas, th there's not as much that can be done. I mean, it takes a much longer period of time for certain behaviors to alter, um, and and not to stifle her or anything like that, because she's not stifled in that way. Like when I'm at home with her, if she if she is super frustrated or starting to get frustrated and her voice starts to raise up. I'll put my hands on my ears and then she'll bring it down immediately because she understands the impact she's now having on somebody. I mean, I never tell her to stop uh, being loud. I don't tell her to stop being upset. I don't tell her just calm down. relax. No, guess, well, well, the reason I it. asked you is just to point out that like, yeah, it's, there's a lot of variables to take into account. Okay. Let me, let me get very specific on the group of people I'm saying can have growth and progress. If you, are capable of independently living. If you are capable of going on to TikTok and making a video, if you are capable of voicing an opinion or voicing whatever way need be, not just necessarily verbal. I mean, there are people who use AAC devices who are just as intelligent as everybody else. If you if you are uh, if you are a level one or even slightly level two. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to be as, as lacking in certain languages as I can. I think this. your daughter could make a TikTok. Um, I don't believe so at all. Maybe I think she would look at the app and she would tap the screen. I think and she and she's not, by the way, she's not dumb in any way, shape or form. I think that if she I've played with it her. enough, she would figure out how to press on it, record the video and, and hit and upload it. I think she could figure it out after she messed with it for a little bit. Well, but the entire video would be her like scripting something or Maybe. just going, hmm, look at it, look at me. Like the like same the way same. that she figured out how to like use YouTube the way she does. I think she would she could figure out how to upload it. The TikTok video itself might just be something yeah, yeah, like yeah. that. But I think she yeah, would yeah. figure it out eventually. She would after playing. No, it, no, no. I, I know she could do that part. Yeah. Absolutely. The, so the practical side of making a, a, a TikTok video, she absolutely could do. Pushing the record button, pushing the stop button, pushing the upload button. Yeah, she's going to read those and push them. It's. The actual putting together of the video, not so much. She'd probably sing, be well. She might maybe she might sing a song from like a Disney movie she likes. Maybe, or something. maybe, but it would be really fractured. I'm not saying she's dumb because she's not dumb at all. I don't want anybody to get the opinion that I look down on my daughter in any way, shape, or form because I don't. Um, I think she's far smarter than a whole lot of people about a whole lot of other things because, like, she loves absolutely and wholeheartedly. Um, and everybody, everybody got their shortcomings, like. Shit, I got mine. You got yours. Everybody got some. And it is stuff, yes, we could work on. But that's the other side of this, too. If you're somebody who says the world needs to accept me the way I am, cool. But you also need to understand what that what that means for everybody around you. 
It means they don't have to. You want them to, but they don't have to. And if they don't, you need to be okay with it. You can't, you can't just yell and scream, why don't you accept me? If you're not willing to do anything for yourself in that regard, if you're not to re- if you're not willing to really sit down and evaluate what it is you're doing and how is it uh, impacting you, and if it bothers you that much, do something about it. And when it comes to folks who have maybe social deficits, I'm not saying this is going to work for everybody, but here's what I did to learn a bunch of it. A, I asked the people that were behaving the way in which I wanted to behave. Two, I read books written by people talking about etiquette and manners and social behavior. If I wanted to meet somebody to go on a date, I read books about how to meet people. I talked to people who regularly got dates. Wait, you got you got better with your social deficits? I did. I did. Oh. Actually, I so did. So you were worse than you are now? Yes, I oh, was okay. much worse, actually. Okay. It was much worse. I had way less patience. I actually talked more. Yeah. I know that's hard for anyone to believe, but I actually used to talk more than I do. I actually know how to stop myself now. I learned how to read faces better. I have a lot more patience and empathy with people, but it's gotten, I, I, I say this all the time, but it's true. I, I've gotten, it's gotten a little too far for me when it comes to the empathy, empathy thing, because mm. I feel, I feel bad for everybody, including people that other people have no empathy for at all. Right. But that's part of the pendulum of learning and growing. That's part of that pendulum. It gets me into trouble because then I feel bad for like society's rejects. But sometimes those society rejects are horrible people. But I still feel bad for those horrible people because I'm like, how bad did their life have to be? How fucked up is their situation that they got to where they are? Right. Right. To become a fucking uh, a criminal, to become Mm -hmm. somebody who who has to rob or burglarize people, to become whatever it is. Right. Um, whatever kind of horrible, violent person they are, right. like what drove them? How did they get to that point where they decided that they needed to be violent or that they can't control their violence? Yeah. Or did how how many of their feelings did they um, repress and right. hold inside and figure that the only way they can express themselves is with anger? Yeah. Because a lot of men aren't taught healthy ways to express emotions, so the only emotion they use is anger. There you go. They weren't taught it. But that's so that's another piece, too, is so many people are fixated on what they didn't get, but they're also not trying to provide it for themselves. Um, I watched I watched uh, uh, a young woman on uh, Instagram or TikTok, one of the two. Anyway, uh, she was on one of them and she was saying how her mother never taught her X. And I'm not going to say what X was because it's very specific. Her mother didn't teach her X which she, as a 40-something-year-old woman, feels as if if she had only had it. Well, you can't go back in time, but you can do something about it now. Right. And if you feel you have this deficit that you don't like, go do something about it. Now, this person in particular I'm talking about does have the capacity to fucking uh, learn it. She does have the ability to teach herself this. One last thing I'm going to say about this, and, and this is the thing that, like, is odd to me when I hear people say it, it may be ableist is when they when you're trying to tell somebody to keep trying, keep going, keep trying, keep pushing, right? Somehow that has become ableist. Well, because they did try, they did try their hardest and it didn't work. We have to do something different or just keep trying. Like when it comes to making friends, well, the progress isn't always apparent right away. Well, but that's just it, though. It just be, uh, how long does it, how long does it take the water to 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 make a stone smooth? You know, the waves keep crashing on the shore. The rock doesn't right. fall apart instantly. The Grand Canyon wasn't made overnight. Right. Thank takes, you, wise proverb. Sometimes it takes a long time. Yes. Um, but the progress isn't noticeable right away. No, it's not. But that's why you keep going till you do notice. And more importantly, that's why I said at the beginning. Ask somebody who behaves in the way in which you would like to, in whatever category, in whatever way, because that person can help you evaluate it, progress you're making. When it comes to the anger thing, it's the same thing with men, just because you only know how to express yourself in anger or frustration, or you shut down, which is what a lot mm-hmm. of men do. I think most men either, when they get emotional, the only way they express it is through anger, or violence, or they shut down. Right. It doesn't mean they can't learn how to express their emotions in a healthy way, right. but it's not. And, it, and it, maybe they feel other emotions, mm-hmm. but it all comes out right. in the form of aggression yeah. or anger, yeah. even if they're happy. Right. 
You know, you're really, uh, this is maybe a stupid example, but the first thing that came to mind is you're really happy to see your buddy. Yeah. How do you express it? You, you maybe you bump fists or you hit right, each other right. or you do that shoulder check thing. And it's so even though it's a positive emotion, you're right. still expressing it in an aggressive. Right. Or, well, because you're trying to still show your buddy you're a dude. Because that's how as Whatever guys we're taught that we always have to be strong. Right. So right. the only we can't show sadness. Mm-hmm. We can't cry. We can't do all these different right. things. So how does all of our emotions come out as anger, aggression, yeah. or maybe be even being loud? Mm-hmm. So a lot of times when guys are upset, they don't cry. What do they do? They yell. Right. They get super angry and yelly. But they're Accusatory. actually... Accusatory. The feelings are actually sadness or them being upset. Yes. But it comes out as another form of aggression. Right. Well, because it's easier to mask over the way you feel with anger. I mean, I've talked about that for myself in previous episodes. That I used to do that constantly. And I'm actually currently working on bringing that down. Um, one, one of the things I, I thought of because uh, um, basically I'm sitting here flashing through all of the things that I've been seeing and reading lately about, you know, us fitting in as a community. Emotion regulation issues. Somebody, somebody said, um, it's not my fault I get pissed off at other people because of emotional regulation issues. Now, granted, they're taking no accountability and I'm not a big fan of that. But some people will bring up emotional regulation issues when it comes to, you know, neurodiversity in general, whether it's ADHD, autism, uh, TBIs, bipolar, uh, borderline, whatever it is. Yes, those things exist. And yes, that's part of the challenge. But you are not incapable of learning how to control that. Now, there are folks who have a much, much harder time controlling their emotions because they truly have emotional regulation issues. But those are also folks who usually live in group homes. Those are folks who have, you know, care aides who are at their house all day. I just, I really do think that there needs to be more encouragement, inspiration, motivation, pushing for folks who are not in those situations to do more, to grow and progress and have their own power in it. And we need to look at the folks who don't have that in an actual real way. I think we need to start wrapping up soon. Yeah. But before yeah. we do, I wanted to ask you one yes. more question. Great. And it's not a joke question. The joke question is oh. after. Oh, good. One more serious question. Yeah, okay. This is serious. What responsibility does society have mm-hmm. to people who don't fit in, to out, society's outcasts? And I'll give you an example. Yeah, please. I don't know if we mentioned this on air, but uh, I was recently talking to you about like the incel killer guy. From California. Sure. There, you don't remember this conversation? Just keep talking. There was a kid I'll catch on. from California. He was yeah. a young man. And he was on the spectrum. Yeah. Oh, he you did up, tell me about this guy. Yeah, he committed yeah. a mass shooting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he may have also had some type of, besides autism, he may have had some other type of personality disorder. Yeah, other, other like stuff that. kicking, yeah. Like a narcissist narcissistic personality or something like that. whatever yeah, yeah. The point was he had some other things but he right. was on the spectrum but his his being on the spectrum probably contributed to the fact that he didn't fit in right he felt a sense of entitlement though uh-huh. which is probably where some of one of the other pathologies Maybe. or something yeah. came in yeah. he's autistic but he also had a very high opinion of himself yes or or like, at least that was his mind's defense like, to like oh i'm his really smart self-esteem. i'm very yeah. attractive how come nobody likes me right and he felt like he deserved friends he yes. felt like he deserved a romantic partner right that entitlement and he, he didn't understand why nobody would accept him right and eventually he snapped and killed a bunch of people uh-huh. my question to you is for people like that not uh-huh. even that extreme but that's right. an extreme example but for just people in general these people that society's rejects yeah. the incels the people who just don't fit in, uh-huh. what responsibility do we have or should we have as a society to these people? I think we need to understand the impact we're having on these people to help develop and create them. Like straight up for incel. I don't know anybody who's an incel. I've never read anybody's work who was an incel who was writing something. The most I know about incels is the stuff you've told me. And from what I can understand about these folks is they feel just as ostracized and and pushed aside and outcast as as a lot of other people. And but it's very specific ways. Uh, from what I understand, these people feel as if um, uh, nobody wants to love them. They're too weird that women just hate them or something to that effect. 
I don't think women in general have a responsibility to them, but I think society has a responsibility to have a little bit more understanding of people who are different. I think the because general consensus seems to be that they're a group that's okay to make fun of. Like we, so they're, they're kind of the, the target of a lot of, and, right. but, and there's, there's some reason, like there's some good reasons why the, there probably is because a lot of them do things that pisses people off because sure. they'll say a lot of stuff that a lot, not all of them, obviously I'm generalizing, yeah. but a lot of these people that are fit into this group of incel uh -huh. have cringy beliefs or misogynistic beliefs so they like they a lot of them have very um like oh like women shouldn't not a lot of them like don't think women should have mm. equal rights mm. or they okay. think that women sh should be in the kitchen it should be yeah, like yeah. the 1950s i i want to i want to say this as a as a, a call i guess call to action for the artistic community we want the world to accept us as one autistic person one aut autistic person I think we ourselves as autistic people need to start treating the world that way too. We need to show the world how to treat each other as individuals. Just because somebody espouses something similar to somebody else, I don't think we should hold. Well, like for incels, you said some of them say things that are misogynistic. Well, I, think, I think a or lot sexist. of them fall into that. Um, let's let's not lump them together. And I think a like, lot of them fall them into these these. They fall into these. Um, I don't know what you want to call them. They fall mm. into these these holes. Uh, they end up in extremist communities because sure. of the fact that they're socially rejected and they're right. ostracized. But now they a lot feel of them, like they fit in. They end up radicalized. So they yes. end up in like extreme right wing circles right. or misogynist circles because they're like, well, women hate me. They reject me. Right. No one accepts me. Well, maybe we should just have a society where like people are forced to get married or like we have arranged marriages right. or women shouldn't have rights. And they, should. they have all these extreme beliefs. And I think they're driven there because everybody shits on them or they're rejected so much that right. eventually they get to a point where we're like, well, fuck everybody else. Well, it's kind of like how people uh, uh, fall into cults, right? right? They don't feel like they belong. They don't feel like they fit in anywhere. And now there's somebody with open arms saying, come with me, join me. I will accept and love you. But they're an easy group to pick on. It's a bunch well, of. Yeah, because they've been ostracized their whole lives. Most of them are young men. So they're men in like their 20s. Yeah. They're not very successful, most of them, because most guys in their 20s are not successful yet or have a career going anyway. Yeah. So they don't have a lot of money. Some of them live in their parents' basement. Sure. They're not successful. Most of them are not very attractive, which is part of the reason why they have right. tr trouble getting laid. Right. Um, and or just people in general wanting to talk to like, them. They're overweight and or unattractive. Right. They're usually awkward, nerdy. Yeah. They they have weird, not weird, but you know, right. very nerdy interests. Like say they're into Warhammer or something. Yeah, sure. like they're into like wow. D and D nerdy stuff. Wow. And so they have a hard time yeah. getting acceptance outside of maybe their small social circle right. if they have a social circle at all. And especially when it comes to attracting a partner. Uh huh. Um, especially more, especially if they're heterosexual. Yes. Um, but I'm sure even like gay incels probably have problems too. There's also a thing now called fem cells, oh, which Jesus are basically Christ. a female version. It's just, yeah, which yeah, I would yeah. imagine you have to be because guys are so gross. You have, uh, to, you probably have to be even worse to be a fem cell because I think like no matter how weird mm -hmm. or unattractive you are mm -hmm. as a woman. This guy's out there who'll sleep with you just because guys are pigs. Yeah, I think the fem cells need to call the incels and just oh, start God. fucking. Oh, like, God. I think they all need to yeah. hook up, yeah. you know? Go to a party, get hammered, fuck each other. Um, no, I... So you're talking about, like, more, more fringe groups, but I think this same kind of thing happens in other groups, too. I, I think it happens in all groups. I mean, if you're... Uh, if you're surrounded by a bunch of Democrats or liberals who who tell you it's OK to be whatever way you already feel like you want to be, well, you're going to go to that group. Now, if you were standing in front of a group of Republicans who also made you feel like you were accepted, like you were wanted, then you'd go to that group. I, I honestly believe that that's really what it comes down to with all of this stuff that you're bringing up. It it's. It's when we want to, when we decide to cast somebody aside and say, no, I don't want to be around them. Instead of saying you, we other this group. Like some people find it more than fine to make fun of Christians. 
Uh, but there are some Christians who decide to make fun of Muslims. There are Muslims who make fun of Christians or atheists or blah, blah, blah. They're lumping an entire group of people together, and they're saying, here's why you're all bad. But we do it to a ton of different groups of people, like goth kids, skater kids, punk kids. Uh, I'm saying kid, but like people in those groups, right? There's somebody who's going to shit on you, and you're going to shit on a different group of people. And I think that's a major reason why autistic folk don't fit in some places. Uh, that's a reason why a lot of people don't fit into certain places. And that's where the extremism ends up happening because yeah. the extremist group allows them to fit in. Uh, there's also a lot of times where people like us don't even notice when we're being um, not accepted. So like I found out the other day that um, a bunch of people used to think I was an asshole. Really? And then somebody was like, oh, he's autistic. Okay. Wait, wait. You you came across a group of people who actually thought you were an asshole? Yeah. Oh, really? I think mainly because I didn't really... The funny thing is they thought I was an asshole because I was quiet. Really? So I'm an asshole because I don't express enough of anything. Because I'm too quiet and I don't express enough of my own thoughts, opinions, or emotions, and apparently I'm an asshole. Most of the time I don't express myself because A, I either have nothing to say because I don't like small talk, Uh or B, if I do have something to say... I have two choices. Yeah. I can keep my mouth shut, which is the choice I usually make. Yeah. Or I can talk about it. But my experience has been that when I do decide to talk about things, mm-hmm. I end up boring people or annoying people because most people don't want to have the same in-depth conversations that I want to have. Mm. Or if I'm just info dumping or talking about an interest that I have, like a video game or something, then am I just going to bore a person with this topic? Yeah. So I usually choose option A, which is to say nothing because... I don't want to bore somebody or annoy somebody. So I'm just yeah. like, I'll just not say anything because they right. don't, they don't, they want to hear my opinion, but they really don't want to hear my mm. opinion because my opinion is probably going to be too intense for them. They yep. expect me to just have some surface level, like, Oh, that's cool. And I don't do that. And nor should you have to, um, here last statement I'm going to make about, about the like fitting in better thing or, or people feeling like they're outcasts. Uh, and this is, anecdotal story from my life so take it for whatever it is you can write it off as well that's you i don't know if that'll work for me i don't care um i had to test out and try tons of different groups of people before i found one group that i even slightly uh could fit into and it wasn't until I met two people in particular, well, three people in particular, that I actually felt like I belonged somewhere, and only somewhat belonged, by the way, because maybe I got my own, you know, past shit to work through still. But three people really made me feel like I kind of fit in, not even completely fit in, but kind of fit in. But you got to keep searching out groups, even groups you never thought might accept you to find acceptance, to find where you fit. Um... And, and I don't mean like run to incels because they'll accept anybody, nothing like that. I'm just saying like, if you've never tried theater, try theater. If you've never gone to a, um, uh, a gaming store where they play Magic the Gathering, Pokemon, where they play D&D, go. Um, if, you've, if you've never played on a team sport, go. Go, go try to get on a team sport. Some of our own biases might get in the way sometimes because well, but just like people have prejudice or bias against us or yes. they may not like us for some reason, you might also be, you might also have some prejudice against some other person because of how they look and you might assume they might not like you. You might assume that, well, that person wouldn't be my friend or that person wouldn't like me or I wouldn't get along with that person, but you're just hmm. ju- basing that on superficial things as well. Or past experience, but you've never met this person before. Test your assumptions, okay? So scientific, uh, not scientific theory, scientific method, okay? Test your hypothesis. If you think that person's not going to like you because of whatever bias you carry with yourself about that person in front of you, test your assumption. Test it. Go talk to that person. Find out if they will. And if you're proven right, great. That doesn't mean right off the next person, but continue to test your hypothesis. I made acquaintances with somebody not too long ago that I never expected to be friendly with because they looked like somebody I would never hang out with. There you go. But, um, you know, that was my prejudice. I'm like, I just wrote this person off because I looked at them. I'm like, eh. Yeah. And then when I got to know them, they're like, oh, they're like, this is somebody who just looking for 
attention, like somebody right. who wants to connect with somebody. Yeah. And it seemed like this person has trouble finding people that they genuinely right. connect with. And, you know, looking at this person, you would not think that they're like that. So, yeah. but, you know, that's, you can't judge somebody how they look. Right. Yeah. Check your, check your assumptions. And even being aware of all this stuff, I still do it. Everybody does it. Well, everybody does it. And I, w I wish more people would test their hypothesis. Far too many people just assume they're right. And, all right. And they're fucking wrong. Anyway, yeah, I'm trying Before to, we go. I'm trying to wrap this shit up. But, um, sorry. All right. Do they call OJ the juice <laughs> in heaven? In heaven? <laughs> this is the two-part question. Part two. When he arrived at the pearly gates, assuming he arrived there, uh -huh. did God say he was freshly squeezed? That's the other one I want to know. <laughs> I'm going to say no and no, but okay. that's just me. Are you saying he's in hell? Yeah. Yes, I am. Yes, I he's am. He's an H-E double hockey stick? Yes. Yes, because I, I believe he did commit murder. So, yes. Why did we say double hockey sticks? I don't fucking know. How does know. that make it better than well, just saying the L? Well, because it kind of looks like hockey sticks and somebody thinks the word hell is fucking blaspheming or some shit. Yeah, but saying the hockey stick is just replacing an L with another L. I know. It makes, it makes fuckers feel better. You're replacing the L with something that looks like an L. Yeah. And letters are just symbols anyway. So now you've substituted a symbol for another symbol that right. looks like the other symbol. So right. it uh, it makes fuckers feel better. Anyway, if you like, dislike, agree or disagree with anything we've said in this episode, please go on. Let us know. And if you think any of the statements I made are ableist, please let me know. I'm not going to change them, but I would like to have some discourse about it because I think it's worthwhile to talk about some of the gray areas of things. So. Thank you very much, everybody, for listening to our episode. Please like, subscribe, follow, leave a comment, leave a like, leave a something or other. I just realized that the light on me was way too bright because my face was all washed out, but oh. I can't do anything about it now. So. No, but I'm glad we fixed it right at the I think end. Like, that's how even it is now. Oh, that's wonderful. Have a great day, everyone.